welcome to We Poets. My name is Sally Baker, and I'm the host of We Poets. We Poets is a poetry show for boys and girls between the ages of 6 and 13. So if you would like to be on the program, please have your parents or your school teacher call me. Also, we're always looking for teenagers to come and be our technicians. You have to be between the ages of 13 and 19, and you can come and learn how to produce a TV program and earn high school credit. Also, I'm always looking for adult guests to come and tell the children something about their job careers. Tonight, we have a very special guest. She is a, po a poet puppet maker, and she's going to tell us all about making puppets. So, without further ado, here we go with our first poet. Hello, young man. Hi. How are you tonight? Good. Could you look there at camera three and tell us your name and how old you are and where you go to school, please? Um, my name is Atticus Miles Rager, and I'm eight years old, and I go to school at Thornhill Elementary. Great. What do you like about school? What's your favorite subject? Um, reading. Reading. What kind of books do you like to read? Um, I like to read a lot of books, like adventure books. Adventure books. Do you go to the library a lot? Mm. Check out your books? Only, um, we're only allowed to go there on Thursday. Good. And mom and dad takes you on Thursday to the library, right? Um, wait, do you mean at school? Or? Yeah, at school. Uh, what days do you go to the library at school? At school um, on Thursdays. On yeah. Thursdays. And when you go to the public library, does mom and dad take you to the public library? Yeah. Good, good. Now, you like to write poems, right? Yeah. What have you written for us tonight? Um, it's The poem's called Humpback Whales. Okay. Do you like whales? Yeah. You like to study them in school? Mm, I don't. I just got this idea from a book that I was reading at. Oh, home. good. Was it named Whales? No, it was just a book about animals, and one of the animals was a whale. Oh, great. Okay, look right there at camera three, and let's hear it nice and loud, please. Humpback whales by Atticus Mouseraker. Humpback whales have no teeth, but instead they use baleen. Humpback whales cannot grow, so they eat a ton of krill. Plus, they also eat small fish. Isn't that an awesome dish? They use their tongue, much bigger than a trout, to push every last drop of water out. <laughs> the baleen traps all the treats so the whales can have their eats. And that's the end of my poem. Great, let's clap. Wasn't that a good poem? Very nice. Very nice, very nice. Now, let's talk about you. What else do you like to do for fun after school? Mm. What games do you like to play? I just, I don't know. I do you just, have a bicycle? Yes. Do you like to ride your bike? I ride on it. And when you're riding your bicycle, what are some important things that you must remember about riding it? To always wear a helmet and to not go into the stream. Good. Those are good rules. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, do you roller skate? Mm, no. Skateboard? No. No? Uh, do you like to play any board games? I kind of like them, but not that much. Not that much, okay. Now, let's talk about this summer. What did you do during summer vacation for fun? Um... I went to camps and I went down to LA to visit my grandma and gra both of the, both of my grandma and grandpas. Good. Could you look there at the camera and tell us what you did at camp? Um, one of them was zoo camp and we looked at animals and we played games about animals and at the end we had like a uh, Party, I guess. Ooh, what did you do at that party? Mm, we just were singing songs that we learned at zoo camp. Do you remember a song you'd like to sing for us that you learned at camp? Mm, I don't really remember. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. So what else did you do besides camping and going to visit Grandma and Grandpa? Mm, what did you do at Grandma and Grandpa's house? Um, I swam in the swimming pool. Ooh, and they got the, a swimming pool at their house? And at the other house? I just um, sometimes I played with the two dogs. <gasps> what kind of dogs have they got? Um, one of them is ours, but we had to send them down here because we, we moved into our uncle and aunt's house. So 
because they have a cat. Mm -hmm. So you so, didn't want the dog and cat fighting, huh? Yeah. So um, our dog's name is Fernando, and then the other one is named Sasha. Oh, good, good. What do you have to do to take care of those pets? Uh, give them food and give them water. They really like to go into their kennels. Oh, what takes place at the kennel? Have you gone there to the kennel? Um, oh, well, I've gone inside of their kennels, oh. but... There are a lot of other dogs and cats here at the kennel, huh? Wait, no, no, it's just, do, do you know what... No, kennels are like little cages, like oh, dog little cages, houses. okay. And each dog or cat has its own little cage. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Now, what else would you like to tell us? Anything you'd like to tell us? Mm, I don't know. I don't really remember anything from summer vacation. Okay, anything else? What would you like to be when you graduate from high school and college? I'd like to be a veterinarian. Oh, good. That's a good job to do. Uh huh. And maybe when you get a little bit older, you can go to some of the um, <laughs> uh, uh, places where they have the uh, pets and take care of them. They're always looking for volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. Now, anything else you want to tell us before we take a break? No. Nah. Okay. Well, you did an excellent job, and now we're going to learn how to pup, how to make puppets from our guest. And I know you can make something and take it home with you and take it to school on Monday and show the children what you made in our TV show today, okay? Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for coming. You did a wonderful job. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Welcome back to the second half of We Poets. I'm Sally Baker, the host. I would now like to introduce you to our special guest for tonight. And her name is Francesca Borgata. I hope I pronounced that right. She is an artist and puppet maker. And she's going to teach our poet here how to make a puppet. And you boys and girls out there watching our program, you can watch. And then maybe you can make a puppet, pu puppet later on. So I'm so glad you could come, Miss uh, Borgata and teach Atticus and the boys and girls watching how to make a, po a puppet. So why don't you first of all uh, teach him how to make a poet and then you and I will go on okay. talking. Okay, well I think Atticus is already on the way because he has his materials laid out for him. Um, the basic one is, uh, this is carpet filler. And um, we like this because it's colorful. Um, it's very easy to join with other materials what he's using is toothpicks, and you just place them together like that. But here, what I have is a range of um, puppets. This is um, all made out of scrap materials, things that are found easily you know, in the area. This puppet here has a combination. Her head is a pillbox. Um, she's got all different kinds of, this is like saran wrap. She has different things. This one is simply made by um, cutting out a manila folder. And um, you put it, put it together by adding pieces to it. And then it's a stick puppet. You can hold it in your hand and use it. So um, here we have all these materials are uh, scrap materials that are found in uh, neighborhoods and um, also at the East Bay Depot, there are centers where people collect these kind of things. And so the kinds of materials that I like to use, um, it's cloth, paper, um, glue has a great deal, um, joining things together, and um, string. And um, so it's a combination, it's a combination of materials. So these are all um, things that have been um, made by children and um, working with me and I go to different places like parks and um, hospitals, residences and um, say to these people, do you want to make a puppet? And many of these people have never even thought about making puppets, but it's a wonderful experience. And um, 
because it's a creative experience, first of all, that combines um, many different materials. The puppets are 3D, mm -hmm. so you work with your hands while you're doing it, with your eyes, you know, connected with the puppet. Um, when you're at a certain point of the puppet, it starts to take form. It has the arms, the legs, the features. It can be an animal or um, some kind of imaginary creature as well as a person. And then you give the puppet a name. Now, this is just the beginning of the experience because once you have a puppet, it's an active kind of relationship. You say, here's the puppet, and you follow the puppet. It's the start of a storytelling or a drama because if you have other people there, it becomes a combination. You work your way towards some kind of story that you can tell with the puppets. Okay, so now you're gonna teach him how to make a simple puppet that he can take home tonight with him. Okay, well, Atticus, here. Okay, I showed you how to put the stick on the body. Do you wanna do that? Okay, stick Hold it, it through up the, the camera three yeah. so we can see what you're doing. Stick it the bottom of the body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is this the head? Um, this is the head and this is where it's blowing some bubbles. Okay, okay, so you stick it in that center and you get a connection. And once you have it on a stick, it's a stick puppet. There are also hand puppets that you manipulate with your hand, string puppets. There are body puppets that people put on to wear in the Maybe he should be eating a sandwich. Speak a little louder, hon. Maybe he should be eating a sandwich. Oh, that's a good Ooh. idea. Yeah, <laughs> do you have a sandwich, a sandwich there in your box? You could... What do we have that looks like a sandwich? Or he could um, make, cut out something to make it look like see, a sandwich. See, once you have the puppet, <laughs> You start to associate um, different elements that develop the character. So now this might be a hungry puppet, and um, we're starting to think about, do you want the sandwich to be in his arm? You better have a hand so he can hold the sandwich. Think about that first. Want to make him a hand? No, I just want him to eat it. How's he going to hold his sandwich okay. if he doesn't a have a hand? Of ideas about <laughs> but he has a mouth. Oh, I see. He has a mouth, yeah. Okay. But if you wanted to make the arm, one thing you could draw it on the paper, you could get something like this that looked rather arm like, or something that join it together. So you can have that, we can put a stick on it so you can move it towards the mouth. Okay, but what do you see for um, an arm? Um. Well, you could use this as an arm. Okay. okay, well that would be fine. Here, let me cut off a piece of it. These are um, shears that are good for working. This kind of stuff. There's one arm, he's gotta have two arms. Okay, two arms, really? Here, let him. Me. Let him do it. We have to have a sharp toothpick. <laughs> okay, here's an arm. So okay. can you figure out how to attach that to the body? You could do that. Right, okay. You can put but, it down on the table so you can push into it. But does he have to have an arm? I don't really want him to have an arm. You don't want it to have an arm? Not really. Oh, he doesn't want it to have okay. an arm. Okay, well, so I'm So it's not going to be able to eat a sandwich if it doesn't have an arm. <laughs> That's yeah. all right, though. <laughs> Actually, it might be able to. You know what? Actually, I can, wait. It, you can the, push it all the way through. It could be like this. Oh, and right. then, yeah. That's all okay. right. Okay, would you like another arm? Yes, please. Like or yes, please. Yes. Okay, let me cut an arm here. That looks like a dinosaur. <laughs> oh, dear. I can't cut it then. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what it looks like to me, a dinosaur. <laughs> okay, well, actually, this is what's wonderful about these pieces is that they do, they start you working because you enjoy the idea. Ooh, what well, do you that, think that looks like? That's almost like an arm itself. What do you think that here, looks like? Let Maybe me you could cut the, off this part. Yeah. Know. Okay. Oh, okay. Whoops. Here we go. Okay. okay. So remember, stick the, the toothpick in one end. Right. Okay. Now you're fine because it's a single joint there. You get some mobility with the arms. And you can always attach another cares. stick to it. So you get that kind of um, movement. Of course, it needs flippers. Wow. Okay. okay. That's starting to have some style here. Yes. <laughs> now, how about a sandwich? Do you want um, this kind of? Stuff for a sandwich, or you know, that's almost like a sandwich. Mm. We could use um, 
Okay, we'll still keep going. It's it's the toothpick. Yes. That Let's see. Okay, would you like a toothpick to go through here? And then you can stick. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> how it's taking shape, yes. But see, the idea of the sandwich was enough to create um, a new kind of aspect of the character. So it's a kind of an associative thing. You step one step at a time, but you follow the puppet. And that's really an important thing. You make a, commi a commitment, you want to make a puppet. Okay, what is this puppet going to do? All right. Now, what is your puppet going to do when you finish him up? What's he going to do, you think? Okay, what's it? first of all, you give the puppet a name before oh, you make it okay. do stuff. <laughs> what's your puppet's what name? Can, can you give a puppet a name? Mm. I can't think of one. Uh, well, he can think of one later. Yeah. He'll think of okay. one later. Is it uh -huh. a person? It, no, it's just, it's a little, it's a little fish. Oh, a little fish. A fish. Oh, oh we got to have a good fish home. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, um, okay. But ha having a name is a very important way of establishing a character and committing to it because it's after that that you can really start to tell the story. And other kids or people that are around, they can talk, and you're talking through your puppet. So, um... It's just a wonderful kind of relationship. And it's a way of really bringing to play making. You know, you bring people together and they do this thing. Tell us about a puppet play. What's a puppet play? Well, a puppet play begins usually with some kind of shared idea. A, a group of people, sometimes I'm in residence, you know, like at a college or a school or something, and we have a certain amount of time and we pick a theme that we can work with. And then each person starts to develop their own interest in a character. And these characters come together, and you're improvising with yourself, with your puppets. Um, well, actually, you make the puppets first, and then you come together and use them together. And it depends on how you're making them and where you're making them, because you can make huge puppets. They're still mobile. There are ways you can make attachments. I build um, puppets sometimes out of chicken wire and gauze and things like that. But you, you find the materials again. And if you're on site at one place, you find specific materials. You find a certain amount of materials. And then that gives a character. That gives a way of, um, Good. oh, oh. Hold that up there to camera three so we can see it. Ooh, that's really a nice one. Isn't that oh, no. good? Woo, woo. Okay, Atticus, that's now, great. Now, would you like for him to make another kind? Do you have another sample that he could make? Um, and a stand, too. Okay, that was, yeah. You can, you can let that puppet stay there. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a fish, there are different ways you can make a background for it. Um, okay. You can put up. Want to show him how to make a background for his fish? Um, Is that something simple he can do? Okay. Um, we can put up gels or cloth or anything like that, but it's something for people to come together with. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, would you like to make a drawing of another character? Just quickly, if you make a, um, something that's at least the size of your hand, or like this. Or you could do his hand? Which way? No, no, no. Oh, no. Think of the character that you're oh, going to okay. make. That's step one. Step one. Think yeah. of the character. Like Is a cat or a dog? An animal? a human, or something out of your own imagination. And um, just take a minute and think of something that you would like, you know, something that you can kind of maybe see in your mind or something. Because then you draw it, um, you cut it out, and you join it together. So. Okay, you go ahead and draw something there. Now I have another question for you. Sure. Uh, who were your teachers taught you how to make puppets? Well, first of all, um, my mom was a sculptor. Oh, good. And when I was a kid, uh, she had classes for children oh. in the backyard. And this was my introduction to paper mache because there were several, more than several, sometimes it seemed like there were a, a host of kids back there. And when a kid makes something, they want to play with it right away. And it was the interaction of us playing with the puppets and actually making plays, you know. So it was a very spontaneous kind of, you know, development. I'm really happy and grateful for it. Um, my teachers with puppetry, my first really big teacher, and this is after all my experimentation myself, going through college and gathering people together, making puppets. 
I met Peter Schumann in New York, and he's the, um, the leader of the Bread and Puppet Theater. And what he wanted to do was for the war, the um, Vietnam War, it was that time, mm -hmm. um, he made enormous puppets out of um, clay and um, mesh. Oh. And they were puppets that like three people would um, manipulate. But we were part of the anti-war demonstrations. So that means in flatbed trucks, oh. the puppets would be on top of the trucks. Oh. And we'd have these signs that said, war is not healthy for children and other living things. And then we'd go down, down the, um, the avenue, mm -hmm. you know, waving, and there'd be huge demonstrations. Oh, what a nice project. And then I, I just wanted to say that um, shadow puppets is, um, I had a teacher from Indonesia, mm -hmm. and the kind of puppets they, they have there are go behind a screen, so you get the projection oh, of the those. shadow. Have you seen those? Yeah, I've seen those before. Where did you see oh, them? Oh, wonderful. Where I don't you know. I just you saw them. I just remember seeing them somewhere. Oh, that's good. Uh -huh. See, uh -huh. <laughs> that's good. Well, the, the, in Indonesia, the shadow play is a very kind of central part of the culture, and a, a puppet play will go on all night. And there's a gamelan that plays the music that's next to it, and there's kind of um, xylophones and all these different flutes, whistles, things. But the puppet master, he has a banana log, and it's about uh, 10 feet long. There's a little space in between, but there might be 100 puppets on the set. And um, the stories he tells is a lot from the Ramayana, which is their basic epic story. Mm -hmm. It's got Rama and Sita and Hanuman, he's the monkey guy. Kumbhakarna, he has like 100 heads or 10 heads and all these arms. And um, so the puppet maker will go on and take on all the different persona of these characters, one after the other. Sometimes they're little clowns that say, oh, no, no, the story should go this way. Uh-huh, good. You know, that kind of thing. Now, and before so, we run out of time, you have a couple of poets, that you, uh, puppets, puppets. That, that you want to show, right? Yeah. Why yeah. don't you get those, and we'll sure, show sure. those. Well, I just want to say that the puppets are made out of buffalo hide. And what you do, I, I practiced making these puppets, and this was really, oh, you know, really difficult. Huh? Yeah, yeah, because you poke, um, you use an awl and different oh. kinds of chisels poking through, so oh. you get this shadow image. Oh. And um, they're very beautiful, they're very mobile uh -huh. and delicate. But I'd like to show you some puppets that I have. Yes. That I've made. One at a time, please. Okay. You can hold it up to and camera both, three. Yeah. They're both a combination of odd objects, and um, they're made with paper mache. But the paper mache, it also involves cloth, cardboard, um, all these different kinds of materials. Now, if you look at this puppet, it's called Ukulele Lady, because she's playing her ukulele. If you go around, this is a paintbrush. And um, so it's using these found objects. And um, in the front, it's puzzle pieces, a puzzle piece here and a puzzle piece down there. In the back, there's a bow. Um, just all these different kinds of materials. You put them together into a figure, you give it the name, and then you play with it. Mm -hmm. where are the, um, Speak louder, hon. Speak where, louder. Um, where, do you know where the other... Um, horn is? No, no, not horns. The, what do they call toothpicks? Oh, they're right, right there. there. <laughs> toothpicks are right there. Now, okay, now we have 97 sorry. toothpicks. Okay. okay, now let's talk about this second puppet. Okay, and this is the dancing bear. Oh. And um, if you look close at this puppet, at the face, it's made out of egg cartons. Oh, yes, it is. Uh -huh. <laughs> you can see the, the, the two eyes, and then, so it's a molded kind of cardboard that becomes a beautiful su uh, surface because when you paint it with the glue, it gets hard and stiff, and you can paint it. So it's all these materials that you find, and by combining them, you can change them into these forms. So, Do you want to ask her something about her uh, puppet? Um, hmm, wait, what are these made out of? They're made out, what is this made um, out This is all cloth. Why don't oh, you feel the it. inside? The inside is a kind of a cardboard box oh. type, and the limbs are attached. Yeah. To it. There's some like newspaper. Oh, there's newspaper. That's the paper mache. <laughs> yeah, and um, 
that while making the puppet one by one, you add the different elements. So is this a mushroom right here? Um, it's actually, it's some kind of flower. It looks like a mushroom for sure. Yeah. But it's just, you know, he waves it, he plays with it. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's just part of, sometimes you toss flowers around, you give flowers to people, good luck, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So that's what he does. Now tell us about this basket before we run out of time. Okay. This basket, we have one minute, uh -huh. <laughs> is my art box. Uh -huh. And this is what I take when I go into different community centers. And it's got all these different kinds of scrap materials. And what I like to tell people is make your own art box. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a really wonderful thing to have in your own house, to have in um, a classroom. But what it is, is a, a bunch of materials and then simple tools. And um, there's something that gets people involved in the act of um, making things, you know. So having that art box um, present, just do it. Try it okay. and see what happens. Well, we've run out of time. I want to thank both of you. Hold your last puppet up to the camera before we wave goodbye. Where's the last one, Jimmy? What is it? Is it an animal? It's, like, it's a kangaroo. Oh, a kangaroo. Hold it up All there right. so they can see it. It's a kangaroo. Oh, you did a good job. So when you go back to school on Monday, you can have your classmates make puppets, OK? And I want to thank you for coming and telling the boys and girls all about how to make a puppet and your interesting career. Mm -hmm. And I hope that the schools will ask you to come back and teach this oh, in yes. their class <laughs> or do a presentation. And quickly before we end, what's the name of the place on Telegraph where you uh, do this? Um, it's the East Bay um, Depot of Creative Reuse. Good. And they really mean creative reuse. It's uh, all junk is beautiful and look at it, you have a chance to use it. Great. So. Okay, we're out of time. So let's wave goodbye. Thank you everybody for watching. Goodbye everybody. Bye-bye.